Hello friends, welcome back. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening. I want to address this subject and I have talked about it before in previous videos. As you know my videos I tend to load them with a lot of information and this was one of the I guess sub topics within a greater subject matter that I covered and it's regarding the Antichrist and is he going to come in the name of the Jewish God or let's say the God of the Bible to deceive the Jews into worshipping him or is he going to be sort of some kind of let's say a lawless Christian who is also going to deceive Christians and the Jewish people into receiving him. I would like us to consider this image because a lot of people within prophecy land seem to think that the Antichrist will be of a Jewish heritage, a Jewish background and not only that he will come in the name of the God of the Bible just so he deceives the people into worshipping him. But let us go to the scriptures and one particular scripture I'm going to focus on today just one and it's found in the book of Daniel and is specific to chapters let's say 39 onwards however I'm going to bring up the scripture from the point of verse 36 many people who understand Bible prophecy scholars students of the Word of God when it comes to interpreting Daniel chapter 11 overwhelmingly the consensus is that most of Daniel chapter 11 has been historically fulfilled the remaining portion of scripture in the same book of Daniel in the same chapter chapter 11 is for future reference in fact before I begin let me just show you something I was reading Commentary, Bible commentary regarding Daniel chapter 11 and the nature of the prophetic scripture in terms of historic application and future application. And when I scroll down to this point in this commentary, and I will attach the link for your further reading, when it comes to this point from verse 36 of Daniel chapter 11, the commentator says, marked with point D here, the Antichrist, the end times Antiochus Epiphanes 1, 36, meaning the verse 36, the willful king, a shift to a future fulfillment, because prior to this verse, the consensus is regarding scholars, Bible students of this particular book, is that it is mostly historically fulfilled until we get to this verse. And from this verse 36 onwards, we consider it to be a future prophetic narrative. Let me continue to read. Then the king shall do according to his own will. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every god, shall speak blasphemies against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished for what has been determined shall be done. The article, or let's say the study paper on this commentary of Daniel chapter 11 is really good and I will include it in the video so you can continue to read and study, examine for yourself. So let's go and read that portion of scripture. And I want to show you where the word of God is telling us that this God is not going to be God of the Bible, this antichrist person rather, the Antichrist or the Little Horn, he's going to come in the name of a foreign God, which is telling us that this God whom the Antichrist will worship, he does have a God that he gives allegiance to and not only that, he advances the glory of this other deity. The Word of God is telling us it's a foreign deity, you guys, so we should hopefully be able to eliminate that Jewish Antichrist or even a Christian Antichrist narrative that is floating around still today. I'm going to read from verse 36 as you can see. So this is Daniel chapter 11 from verse 36 which is specific to the end times. Let's read friends. Then the king shall do according to his own will. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every god, shall speak blasphemies 
against the God of gods and shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished. For what has been determined shall be done. He shall regard neither the God of his fathers nor the desire of women nor regard any God. For he shall exalt himself above them all. Let's carry on. The word of God is so important to understand and to read, you guys. And I'm telling myself that. Verse 38. But in their place he shall honour a God of fortresses. And a God which his fathers did not know he shall honour with gold and silver, with precious stones and pleasant things. Verse 39. This is the verse. Thus he shall act against the strongest fortresses with a foreign god. Foreign to whom? Israel, the people of God, the saints. Which he shall acknowledge and advance its glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and divide the land for gain. And I propose to you... This person, this individual, which the Antichrist will worship, is a deity that is outside of Israel and considered foreign and is Islamic. It's Islamic of nature. It's a Mohammedan. You have to look at this scripture repeatedly, friends, to understand what the Word of God is trying to disclose to us. When we get verses like this one in particular, and we see words such as foreign God, that's a big chunk of information right there because it's telling us the nature of this one that is to come whom he will give his allegiance to and at the same time he seeks himself to be worshipped but it's very specific that he makes war against other kingdoms he goes against their strongest fortresses so this is a god of war we're talking about provocation not only that, he will seek to advance the glory of his foreign God. What I'm going to do is take you over to the verse in particular that's of interest to me right now. Daniel 11 verse 39 in Bible Hub, all the different versions of the Bible in that verse is given here. Let's read them all. NIV reads on the left, <clears throat> He will attack the mightiest fortresses with the help of a foreign god and will greatly honour those who acknowledge him. He will make them rulers over many people and will distribute the land at a price. Let's go on. New Living Translation. Claiming this foreign god's help, he will attack the strongest fortresses. He will honour those who submit to him appointing them to positions of authority and dividing the land among them as their reward. This is an Islamic antichrist little horn coming. The word of God is telling us through, through many descriptive verses, the language that is being expressed here is that this whole thing about this antichrist is that he's foreign God worshipper. English Standard Version reads, He shall deal with the strongest fortresses, so there are many who will oppose him and he will oppose many, with the help of a foreign god. Again, foreign. Those who acknowledge him he shall load with honour and shall divide the land for a price. In the Berean Study Bible, he will attack the strongest fortresses with the help of a foreign god. I think I've made the point. I think the word of God has made the point. He comes in the name and power of a foreign God. So the Antichrist, the little horn, the man of sin, the lawless one, very many different titles to describe this wicked one that's coming. He won't be coming in the name of the God of the Bible. Yahweh, Jesus. Is not going to look like that. He's not going to look like that. Not like that. Or not even that. People who hold that view cause a lot of problems for Jewish men and Christians. 
who are just trying to go about their business. And we need to understand why. Why is there this spirit out there that seems to really want to put the pin onto the Jewish people who they think will produce the Antichrist? The Word of God gives no direction, no inclination to that. None whatsoever. Furthermore, in Daniel chapter 11 verse 39, in the Hebrew, let's break it down some more. Bible Hub and Blue Bible, there's so many different apps out there available now so we can be students of the word, look at the concordances, what was the word in the Hebrew, what does it mean in the Greek. So we, we, we have so many tools available to us, friends. I want to go to that particular verse where it says the foreign. Will advance, he shall acknowledge which foreign divide the land. Okay, there we go. Let's go and have a look at the number and strongs. Can you see that, friends? Is it large enough? The text foreign. It's too large. It's too tiny. Let me just click on it instead. All right. What does it bring us? So it brings to us this word nekar, which is translated in English foreign. It means just what they translated it to mean. That which is foreign, foreignness. Alien, foreign, foreigner, foreigners, strange. This is a strange God. Strange to Israel. On the right is a column listing the various accounts in scripture where this word was used before. Let's go back and have a look. Genesis 35, where with him put away the foreign gods. Do you remember the Lord would always warn his people to put away the foreign gods which were among them, among his people, meaning the surrounding nations. And I propose to you that foreign god is Baal, it's the same god today, and it's being worshipped, and not only that, it's threatening the very existence of the Jewish state of Israel. Because the entity called Satan, Lucifer, understands that the return of Jesus Christ the King is drawing near and so he needs to prepare to counter his return with a foreign god. Who are the major false gods of the Old Testament? The following are descriptions of some of the major false gods of the Old Testament, also known as foreign, strange, alien gods to the God of the Bible. Ashtoreth. Also called Astarte or Ashtoreth, this goddess of the Canaanites was connected with fertility and maternity. Worship of Ashtoreth was strong at Sidon. She was sometimes called a consort or companion of Baal. King Solomon, influenced by his foreign wives, who had foreign gods, fell into Ashtoreth worship, which led to his downfall. Baal. Baal, sometimes called Bel, was the supreme god among the Canaanites. And I propose this is the same deity today that goes by the name Allah. And his sidekick or his vessel for wickedness was Muhammad. I'll also put this link in the description for your further reading. I want to make this a short video. Now, in the Quran, because I know people will say, oh, but the Quran for forbids the worshipping of Baal or the moon which is connected to Baal worship because in Surah 41 verse 37 it reads this in the Quran the night the day the sun the moon are only a few of his signs do not bow down in worship to the sun or the moon but bow down to God who created them if it is truly him that you worship <laughs> Of course, the Quran has a verse like this because it claims to be the God of the Holy Bible. But yet, what do we find in Islam? Bowing down, worshipping, pagan idolatry, right? There's the verse again, just in case that, that text wasn't clear. Surah 41. 37 
What is the connection, you guys, between the crescent moon star and Baal? The one and the same deity. And I propose again that the Antichrist will come in the name of this foreign god to advance this idol's glory. And with the strength of this deity, he opposes other stronger fortresses. And he seeks to make war with them. And what do we have today? This is exactly what's taking place right now. There's something I want to show you. Please stay with me towards the end of this video. Archaeological discoveries depicting the crescent moon, the star. Some places have it as the sun worship. It's the same demon gods from the Old Testament days. The same enmity exists. The Holy One of Israel is opposed to such pagan idolatry and this very Baal worship is what his people the children of Israel were guilty of committing they were worshipping marrying foreign wives and being given over to pagan idolatry spiritual idolatry it's the same thing the crescent moon in Mecca the star and crescent was the emblem of the Ottoman Empire and did you know that this was the very first time any Islamic nation used the symbolism of the crescent moon and star on its national flag. Crescent pagan carving of the solar or star deity Baal Haddad depicted as a disc in a crescent, Luciferian symbol. They just change faces, you guys, but it's the same principality behind it. You think about the Muslim world today or the Islamic nations today. surrounding Israel in the name of Allah in the name of Baal the surrounding nations are Baal worshippers it's the same story as it was depicted in the Old Testament history repeats itself so this one this vile person that's coming is going to advance the glory of this foreign god against the little tiny speck there these people is it any wonder why Satan has plotted this to absolute surround them it's staring us in the face you guys a clip I want to show you straight after this I thought this was a great image it's from Armageddon News um, designed by John Preacher the Islamic crescent and star the sun of the morning Reference to Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Yahweh is talking to both Lucifer and the Antichrist, king of Babylon, the one which will weaken or destroy many nations. This verse tells us that the Antichrist symbol is found in the morning, ascending into the heavens above the stars of God. The Antichrist is the sun of the crescent moon and star, Islam, which appears in the morning. However, Yahweh says, this Islamic king, his Middle Eastern empire and its symbol will be cast down to the ground and destroyed. The Antichrist is not going to come in the name of the God of the Bible to deceive the Jews or to deceive the Christians but I believe because of the many signs false signs and wonders that the false prophet will do it may very well convince many in that part of the world and they may forsake the holy covenant the faith of Jesus Christ it may very well happen a clip a four minute video clip I would like to share with you from Armageddon news channel I'll put the link in the description, friends, but listen to this. Tell me what you think. This is Armageddon News. With the ISIS Caliphate now expanding its reach into the world, especially into Europe, we need to look at the deceptive, unseen agenda behind these attacks. The purpose of these attacks is to push the world toward reviving the Islamic Empire. We are in fact witnessing a problem reaction solution scenario in the Middle East. The problem which has been created is ISIS, 
and jihadist terror groups. The reaction is global fear. The solution now being proposed is an alternative caliphate. The purpose of these groups is to create such fear of jihadist attacks that the world will soon be begging the Arabs to revive an alternative caliphate just to stop the destruction of Western civilization. Because a recognized caliphate is the only unifying factor that Islam has. As Muslims worldwide have to swear allegiance or bear to the recognized caliph and obey his every command, which the Bible calls the worship of the beast. Revelation 13 8 says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life, of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The Muslim bear, or oath of allegiance is a perfect description of the global worship of the beast. Therefore the theory being proposed is that this would stop ISIS recruiting, as Muslims would favor swearing allegiance to the recognized peaceful caliphate, above the unrecognized ISIS group. Unfortunately this is not just a theory. We have begun to see Muslims pushing for this very thing. To create an alternative caliphate, as the means to finally create peace in the Middle East and the world, and stop the Islamic State's recruiting program. The Bible itself speaks about this peace, which will destroy many. Daniel 8.25 And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. Middle East peace is what the world has been waiting for. And many Muslims are becoming increasingly vocal about reviving their caliphate, as a means to create that peace. And mainstream media has also begun discussing what an alternative to the Islamic State would look like. Saying, that the only way to stop Muslims murdering, is to create a theocratic dictatorship. One Twitter post reads, Many Muslims want a real caliphate, not ISIS. The best way to defeat ISIS, is to create one. The Bible says, this Islamic beast caliphate, which Muslims are pushing for will begin with ten kings, who will surrender their power to the Antichrist Caliph. But this caliphate will be anything but peaceful, and will wage jihad on the world, Israel, and, even Jesus Christ, at the Battle of Armageddon. Revelation 13 4 says, And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war? with him. As we see, the purpose of this revived beast empire, is to wage war on the world. Which is exactly what Islam teaches. That when their Mahdi appears, and revives their caliphate, they will begin a global jihad, to make the world submit to Sharia law. So it makes perfect sense for the Bible to link the revival of this beast empire, to a declaration of war, or jihad because that has always been the purpose of the caliphate, to wage war, and advance the religion of Islam. To find out more about okay, the rising friends, beast so empire, Okay friends, I wanted to share that with you. It's very face. well done, you can find it on Armageddon News, and what I'll do, I will link it in the description of my video. But once again, just to remind you, that the scripture which I begun the video and the messages about is in Daniel chapter 11 and let me repeat that verse it's found here in verse 39 thus he this he is the little horn or the in other words the Antichrist thus he shall act against the strongest fortresses with a foreign God which he shall acknowledge and advance its glory and he shall cause them to rule over many and divide the land for gain. So I'm going to leave this video with you. Please share it, friends. Like, and if you haven't subscribed, I really encourage you to please subscribe to my channel. And once again, let's stick to the Word of God and seek understanding from the Holy Spirit who gives us understanding when we seek it. I'll be back again soon, friends. Hopefully this was a short video and um, I've got more to present and please keep a lookout for it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.